statistics and excel calories data statistics sample example get ready taking a deep breath holding it in for 10 seconds and looking forward to a smooth soothing excel first a word from our sponsor yeah actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our accounting rocks product line if you're not crunching cords using excel you're doing it wrong a must-have product because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet, possibly being able to get sample data sets from kaggle.com. That's K-A-G-G-L-E.com. If you do have access to this workbook, three tabs down below. Example, practice blank example in essence answer key practice tab having pre-formatted cells so we can get right to the heart of the practice problem the blank tab just having our data set so we can practice formatting cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing we've got our data set which we will make a table out of this is calories our related data set. We're going to imagine that this is the entire population data set on the left hand side. We'll make a histogram from it. We'll make an average of that entire data set. Then we want to take samples of this data set to see how closely the samples mirror uh, the, uh, the results of the full data set. And we're going to be practicing how we can basically take randomized samples from what we're imagining is our whole data set. And this is similar to what we've seen in the past, but slightly different because we want to basically, we can use our randomized numbers, but then we want to line them up to sample, to line items on the actual data set. So we can then put our random numbers next to the entire data set to, to use that to scramble the data set in basically a random method. And then we'll imagine how, how we can use this tool so that we can uh, pull multiple samples uh, together. So then we'll do, you know, multiple samples here uh, that we will be pulling together. It looks like we have samples of, you know, 20 or 19 or 20. And then we'll make a whole bunch of those samples together to practice that method of sampling. And then we'll see what the results of that sample are. So let's go to the blank tab and I'm going to delete this. So here's our data on the left. Now it's currently sorted by date so we're tracking in, in essence calories here by day we're going to imagine this is our full data set so let's insert a table so i'm going to go to the insert tab up top we're going to go to the tables and insert a table so it's going all the way from a1 to uh, 458 so fairly long data set but not huge i'm going to say okay so there's our data set it's currently sorted by date we could sort it by calories to see lowest to highest and then highest to lowest. So we could do that and then, and, or we can sort it back by the date over here, lowest to highest. And then we're going to take that data and do some calculations from it. Let's do our standard average. I'm going to pull in column C, bringing that in a bit and our, our standard kind of uh, calculations then would be the average or mean before I do this by the way I should have done this first I'm gonna I'm going to format the entire worksheet so let me put my cursor over here on the triangle this is gonna mess up the date formatting so we'll see how to deal with that I'm gonna right click I'm going to format the entire worksheet 
and I'm going to go then to my baseline formatting, which I would like to be the currency, negative numbers bracketed, and red. And I don't think we need the decimals, so I'll remove the decimals and no dollar sign. So I'm going to say, OK, when I do that, it's going to mess up the date formatting over here. So I'm going to go, OK, so messed up the date formatting. Then I'll just select this entire column and go to the Home tab, Number Group. And in this drop down, this is like the quick formatting. I can find then the date. So I can go down to the short date and it'll populate it back to the date. So that looks good. Let's make this one white on the font. Okay, and normally I would like to do that to the sheet before I add the actual data possibly, uh, if possible, and that will make things a little bit faster sometimes. Then I'm gonna select the calories and, or let's, let's calculate our average first. So let's go to the average, average or mean. So the average is mean. I'm gonna pull this to the, to the right and we'll say this equals the average. There's our function, double click in the function, selecting just the numbers. So we have the drop down in our table. So we're picking up the table of calories. That's it. Enter. Then we might want the median. Median. We'll use our median function equals the median. I'm doing this fairly quickly because we've seen these in the past. Double click in the median, selecting our data and enter. So there's the median. We might want the min or let's take the max first. Max and then the min equals the max. Double click in the max function and then selecting our data, that's the top calorie, and then the min equals, and then min, selecting the min, and the data, and there's the min, zero. <laughs> okay, so let's select the entire data here. I'm going to make it bold, home tab, font group, I'll bold it, I'm also going to scroll in. I'm scrolling just a little. That looks that looks pretty good. Let's enter a histogram now. So I'm going to select the entire data and go to the insert tab and the charts will make a histogram. So there's our histogram of the data. I'll delete the title. I'll make this data blue and bordered as is normally our custom. So I'm going to go to the insert tab. I'm sorry, home tab, font group, bucket drop down. If you don't have that blue, it's in the more colors, standard, and there's the blue I'll use, and then okay. Let's put some borders around it, home tab, font group, and put some borders around it. So there we have it, and there's our chart. Okay, so now let's create our sample. So if I wanted to make a random sample, uh, of this of these numbers, then what I could do is say, I'm going to put this next to a column where we randomly generate numbers, and then organize the randomly generated numbers in order so it will shuffle the calories column randomly, right? And then we can pick the numbers. Now, if I want to do multiple samples, then we can make we can make multiple of these kind of random random shuffling tools. So let's try doing that. I'm going to select the entire column, column B, right click and copy. And I'm going to put that over here somewhere. I'll put it over here in uh, M. Right click. I'm going to paste it just one, two, three, because I want to put a different table around it. And then here's my random shuffle. My random shuffle tool will be over here. I'm going to use just the normal random shuffle generator equals rand double clicking that and then i'm just going to close up the brackets or just enter and it'll close it up for you that's a one but remember if i if i add numbers home tab numbers or decimals add decimals then you've got this pretty long randomly generated number right now if i double click on that it'll do the same formula all the way down so now we've got these randomly generated numbers all the way down so if I shuffle the data by these randomly generated numbers, then I should get a random pick on the right hand side. And then I could just see how many I want to include in my random pick. 
So let's put a table around this so they're connected together. So when I shuffle them, they will shuffle together. So I'm going to then go to the insert tab, tables, make a table. And it's selecting the whole data set. That looks good. Okay. So now I can shuffle it by the random shuffle here, A to Z or Z to A. Now, every time I do that, it basically reshuffles it again. The random generator keeps on generating. So, so that's great because it allows me to create more random samples. When I want to actually keep it static, then I'm going to copy these two and paste it some other place and with the static numbers so it won't keep shuffling. But before I do that, let's make a couple of these. Let's say, let's make a, let's like make like five of these random generating machines, right? So I've got one here. I'm going to copy both of them. I'm going to say copy and then, uh, and then I'll paste, right click and paste, or I can just say control C. I'm going to paste another one, two, paste another three. So I've got, there's four of them. I'll paste one more over here. So there's five of these random generating machines. I'm going to make a bunch of skinny columns, selecting column W, holding down control, column T, holding down, I'm holding down control to select each of the columns, which are not next to each other, non-adjacent, as they say. I'm going to put my cursor in between them, make them the same skinny size. So now they're the same skinny. And then maybe we can make all these columns skinnier as well including column Y, Y, Y. And so there we have it. All right. So now let's make, let's make samples of like 20 of these, right? So we're going to say I'm on one. So I'm going to go down to 21. So these are all randomly shuffled. So let's randomly shuffle them again. Notice I have a different number up here than up here because, because when I shuffle them, they shake it up again. So I'm just going to shuffle them all, shuffle it up. All right, so now they all have different numbers. And if I just pick the first set, I'm going to get a random sample because, they, because they've shuffled them all up. So now let's imagine that we want like five samples of 20, right? So then I could copy just 20 of these, right? Go down to 20 of each of these. But if I want to do that, if I want to make a random five sample of 20 generator over here, then let's do that. I'm going to close that. I'm going to make column Z a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to say that uh, we can say this is the count, let's say. And then this is going to be sample, sample one. And then I, I think it'll copy if I just do one. If I put my cursor on the fill handle, yeah, it does sample two, sample three, sample five, up to five. All right. And then I'm going to make that a header. So I'm going to put my cursor over that. Home tab, font group. Let's make that black, white. Let's center it. Uh, not that center, this center. All right. And then I'm going to put this, the, it's going to go from one, two, and we're going to make a sample of 20. I'm going to select those two and just count down to 20. So it's going to count down to 20. All right. Let's center those home tab uh, alignment and center them. And then I'm just going to say this equals the, the, sample of the first random generator so that one so i'm going to say tab to go to the to go to the cell to the right equals and then this is going to be from the second random generator so this one tab and then equals and this is going to go from the third random generator so it's going to be this one and then tab and this one's going to be for the fourth random generator this one tab and then this one's going to be from the fifth random generator and enter. So they're all different and they're, and they're going to shake up. See how they're going to shake up as these shake up, right? As this changes, uh, as I change these and I reshuffle them, let's change it this way. Then these are going to change. All right. So then I can copy this down, putting my cursor here and copy it down to just 20. So now it's picking up the top 20 that are going to randomly shuffle every time I shuffle this deck over here. So if I go, so if I go to the right and I shuffle this, we can go shuffle, 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 and shuffle. 
then then these whole thing this whole thing should shuffle picking the top 20 of each which are randomly selected from the entire set due to the shuffling nature that that's the that's the idea so let's make this like blue uh let's make this blue and bordered home tab font group bordered drop down blue and so that's our generator so now let's now let's imagine that we want how many samples do we want to make we want to make like let's make like 75 samples we'll make a decent amount of samples and we can just make them in sets of five right so i can say this is gonna i'm gonna do this again so this is gonna be sample one actually let's do it one tab over let's make a skinny here a skinny ag and then i'm gonna skip a cell and put it here let's say sample one and i'm gonna bring it out to 75 fill handle bringing it out to 75 75 75 right there and then i'm gonna i'm gonna make that home tab font group and make this uh black and white and let's center it so alignment and center okay and then and then uh i i could just uh do this a couple ways i could copy uh, the data over. I can't use I can't use a cell reference because I'm going to shuffle the data each time, right? So what I could do is I could just select all of this data that we have generated, and Control C, copy it, and then I'm going to paste it over here. One, two, three. So I'm going to paste it. One, two, three, and then I might also paste the values. I mean, paste the formatting so it gives me that blue. So I can could then paste it, the formatting. And then possibly we want to hide these. I could then say, let's hide these cells so I can see them closer, but I'll do that next time. And then we can reshuffle. See, we have to reshuffle every time. Shuffle again, uh, boom. And then shuffle the second one, and then shuffle the third one, shuffle the fourth one, and shuffle number five. And that should rearrange our numbers over here. So we have a different set of numbers. And then I can do the same thing. I can copy these and say, this is our next sample uh, that we made. So I'm gonna right click and paste it one, two, three, just the values, cause I don't want the formulas in there and uh, right click and then paste the formatting. Now then I could hide these so I could still work next to pretty close to each other. So the way you hide is I'm gonna go from the column AI to column AR, let go right click the selected cells and then hide them so now i can see it's going from ah to as so i know there's cells between it you can also see this little kind of thing in between a little little box and then i can do the same thing so i can reshuffle over here we're gonna go okay shuffle it up again duh this is kind of redundant but it's fun this is fun to do so we're gonna shuffle it up it's like it's like shuffling cards which is more fun than playing the actual game shuffling the cards you know so we're going to copy that and paste it right click and paste it one two three and then uh hold on a second undo undo Control z i just want to copy these numbers not the not the counting <laughs> and then right click paste hopefully i didn't do that in the other ones Paste it one, two, three, and then right click and I'll paste the formatting as well. So we'll do this a couple more times. So it's a, it's a little tedious, shuffle, and then we'll shuffle. And then the third one will shuffle. And then the fourth one will shuffle. And then the fifth one will shuffle. And then we'll copy our new generated data, newly generated data, control C, and then paste that right here right click paste one two three right click paste the formatting only and then i'm going to hide going from as to bb right click and hide so that we're lined up for five uh five more i did mess up on one of them i can see so i'm going to unhide i'm going to go from ah to bc right click and unhide just to note that it looks like somewhere 
I picked up, no, that, that's right, that looks right. So let's go back to BB to uh, AI, right click and hide again. I was, I was second guessing myself, uh, which is, which is not something that sh no one should be second guessing me because I'm, I don't make mis mistakes or things that other people do. Uh, so we'll then do this again, and then let's copy the next one, and we'll copy the samples. Control C, right click, paste one, two, three, right click, paste value formatting only, and then shuffle. I shouldn't have done 75 of these. Shuffle, 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 and then copy the results, copy, control C, move it on over, right click, paste, one, two, three, paste, formatting, go from BC to BL, right click, hide, and then again, ultra vase. Now we could have made more of these, like you might say, well, why didn't you make more shuffling? I mean, I could have made, you know, 75 shufflers, uh, and, and that's another method that we could, you know, you could use, uh, but you can test out what would be working best for you. I'm going to copy once again, copy the new shuffle data, right click, paste one, two, three, right click, paste the formatting and then shuffle, shuffle, keep it rolling, keep grinding, keep, keep the nose to the grindstone but my nose is almost gone. My nose looks like Michael Jackson at the end of, no, it's, you gotta keep the nose to the grindstone. We're gonna copy that and we're gonna paste it over here. Paste it one, two, three, right click, paste the, the formatting and then hide from BM to BV, right click and hide. All right, ultra vase another time. Let's do it again. Do it till you get it right, till it's routine. So you, you don't even think about it. It's just like, it's just an extension of beingness. I don't know what I'm talking about. We're gonna then copy this, Roger, Roger that, Control C, right click, paste one, two, three, right click, paste the formatting, and then a couple more times, just a couple more random, 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 random. No one wants to see you shuffle cards. What? I shuffle like an expert. People wait around the block to watch me shuffle cards. Tell you what, the way I shuffle is amazing. Right click, paste one, two, three, right click, formatting let's hide we're almost there high beat bw to cf right click and hide and so then i'm going to do this a couple more times okay i spared you from from watching me do the last couple ones but i did the same process until we get up to 75 the sample 75. so now what i'm going to do is just unhide the cells so we have all of our samples so we have hidden cells between a h and CQ. So I'm going to put my cursor on AH and scroll on over to CQ. So those hidden cells are in between. By the way, you could go all the way over from here, you know, uh, if you needed to, as long as the hidden cells are in between what has been selected, right click and unhide now. So now we have unhidden and then I can put my totals down below. Let's put an average, an a our average down here. So I'm gonna then take the average of the sample, right? I'm gonna take the average of the sample that we have equals the, the average brackets and scroll on up. So the average of the sample that we have taken is uh, 2,174. You'll recall that the average of the entire population, 2,189. So, so that, so there's our comparison and we could compare, of course, each data point that we got, you know, compared to, 
to the, you know the average so let's take the bottom number here the average and I'm going to copy that all the way across to the right to our 75 samples of 20 so there's our averages for the whole set of samples that we took and then let's take this entire thing I'm going to make it blue so I'm going to go up top and say let's make that drop down blue white bordered and then I'm going to I'd like to see that in a vertical format. So I'm going to do what we've seen in the past here, take this whole thing and then paste it in a vertical format. So I'm going to copy this, put it in a column, in other words, control C or copy scrolling up. I'm going to put it, oops, put the wrong button, put it right here in D I D right click. Uh, I lost it now because I fumbled around. I fumbled. All right, fumble. Let's copy it again. Ultra copy, ultra vase another time. Once again, por favor, right click and copy. Copy that, copy that. Roger, Roger. And then we're gonna paste that in di. Right click and paste it. Let's do it one, two, three. And then I'm gonna copy again, right click and copy and then paste it over here in DG and paste it special because we want to transpose. Transpose, make it into a column if you would. And, and Excel's like, okay. And then it does it, no problem. No problem, says Excel. If we can do that without a problem. So let's make this into a table. I can say insert and tables. Let's make a table boom so there's our averages and uh and and we can compare the the average to to what we had for the expected or actual or population average right the population average was equal to i'm going to scroll all the way to the left to pick up that original average that we came up to 2189 so there's the population average and I'm going to say double click on this one. I'm going to say uh, make it absolute by selecting F4 dollar sign before the E and the one to pull that all the way down. This is the difference from the average of all those. And so this is going to be equal to this minus this. So there's the difference all the way down. We could make a total column down here and a table. You can do that by going to the table tools and total row and then on this column i would like it to give me the average of the averages which is uh which is that pretty close right and then i can for this one i want the sum which is doing of the differences so that's that's that i'm going to make this a little bit smaller now you could you could take a histogram then of our samples too to see what what each sample kind of looks like in terms of the of the data. So for example, I could go into my sample data here for 75 and insert uh, charts, a histogram. Now we only took 75. So the histogram, you know, is somewhat limited in the data, but here's our histogram of 75. And we could change the buckets if we want to, to maybe add more buckets, like five buckets. Uh, and so there's our histogram with five buckets. We can compare that to the data for 74. So I could take the data for 74 and insert, if we so choose, a histogram. And we can compare the results on 74, putting this down here. I'm going to just call this 74 and we can then take a look at our buckets change that I think we did five buckets right have five buckets on this one so there's you know different data sets for the randomly generated data mapped out with a histogram let's do one more 73 and insert charts histogram his his Histogram, histogram, 
it's hissing at me like a cat. And then this is gonna be, I don't know what, why I had to say that, I don't know. Histogram. We're gonna say, let's make this one into number of buckets five, so they all have five buckets. So, so we can compare, you know, the samples data that we have. And we can also make a histogram if we wanted to of the averages uh, of all the samples, because we took 75 samples. So I could then take take these results if we wanted to, uh, and then make a histogram of that. Insert uh, a histogram. I should have moved up before I did it. Now I got to move it up. I, I oh, that's not too bad. I thought it was going to be more tedious than that. Okay, so this is going to be the the samples samples. Let's just say. And that has you know five buckets, so 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 there's just a different kind of tool that we can basically use for the shuffling tool and how we can generate our our random data uh, samples and use that of course to create our histograms of the sample data that we have chosen per sample or possibly of the averages of all you know the the average sample data.